So uh, we're going to go into lightning talks now. Uh, so I'm just going to do our first lightning talk. Uh, it's an architectural talk. Yeah, just some uh, random stuff on the project. Uh, kind of like, I guess it's a, if there's a recipe that have ingredients and steps, I'm just giving you kind of more of the recipe the, uh, ingredients today. And you know, maybe launch to a longer talk some other day when I uh, get things working together. Um, anyways, hopefully this doesn't bore you and make you sleep. But uh, just really quickly, my background, I uh, did programming for quite a while and I just recently jumped out of a full-time job and decided to start a company doing mobile. Uh, thank you. We'll see in a few months if you're still clapping. Uh, always. Well, I'm clapping, but anyways. Um, anyways, doing mobile stuff and uh, you know iOS and things like that. So I, I, it took me a little while to get back to full-time programming. I was doing a lot of programming at my last job. Uh, part of the reason I want to do this thing. But uh, so, so I kind of you know, put together some of these uh, things to build a full kind of uh, integrated mobile server-side stuff and uh, can't talk about the startup yet because I'm still working on it and stuff, but soon I could would like to come back and talk more about what I learned. Uh, but uh, yeah, the kind of ingredients are, you know, like on the iOS client is uh, Objective-C and uh, Xcode you know, stuff. Uh, it's a mobile location thing, so you know the doing core data, which is really important. Uh, I mean, it's similar to uh, Active uh, Active Record and all that model. It's an ORM on the iOS world, pretty solid actually, because uh, I've done a number of those or ORM starting way back. ORM. It's an object relational mapper. So the idea is to take the object oriented design of models and uh, coalesce that into kind of a back end relational model. Uh, so believe it or not, these little devices, you have to deal with that. Or you don't have to, but you, could, you suffer other pains. Uh, one of the key ingredients of this core data thing is actually behind a lot of really good caching and uh, uh, you know, like performance, UI performance responsiveness. So you, you know, you're using like the, the Twitter app versus the iPhone app, the, the, or sorry, the Facebook app. The old, you'll notice big differences, not just because it's HTML5, but because in HTML5, the, caching and all that stuff responsiveness is a big issue uh, you know when you're doing uh, that on a device you don't have access to it but on a native which is what the Twitter guys uh, went through uh, they're using core data backed objects I mean I'm, I'm guessing I don't know the code but I you know based on what I see so you get that really fluid response because they can manage caching on the device and leveraging all that framework that's put together by you know a bunch of engineers they test them all that but um, you know, I, I'm more than happy to talk about that stuff at some point. I think it was Ruby, so I didn't, I didn't really uh, just wanted to mention it that those are the kind of benefits things. Uh, other things, obviously, Event Kit gives you like access to the local calendar address book. You can actually get the entire contact uh, uh, book for for the person, the phone on, of the person. So that's why I think a while ago, not long ago, you heard like. Path and all these companies got in trouble because what they did was when you installed it, they just went right through your address book and uploaded to their server. But anyways, can't do that anymore because people get pissed. Uh, <laughs> MapKit is really cool. Uh, iOS 6 is going to roll a new MapKit, uh, new, mostly new tiles, but a lot of new API, APIs, so it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, and then the cool thing on this is RESTKit. And it was built, I think, I think RESTKit uh, was built to work with this 320. API stuff which Facebook open source, but it follows a lot of metaphor. In fact, the guy that wrote it, I think, is like a Ruby guy because in the older version of it, at the bottom of the docs and the class, there's these things called Rails routers, and the idea is you can map objects uh, that you define, REST objects, uh, in Objective-C to URL paths uh, in your Ruby on Rail routers exactly the same way. In fact, the router class looks exactly like the Rails router. And you just create these objects, you map it to that, and you go hit load or whatever, and it goes to your Rails endpoint and pulls these API. Really cool, but they changed the API a lot. It's a lot more generic and it's not as Railsy, but that stuff is still there, and I'm using that. And the cool thing about ResKit is it has a wrapper to a core data object, which is giving me a little bit of trouble, but the idea is you can actually nest objects uh, on your model, uh, and then it will do the entire serialization and packing and all that all in one shot, and it has uh, nice uh, database seeding stuff, because on a device that you gotta preload it with data, uh, you know, you kind of have to load it over a network or whatever, but you can actually pack seed data in, your, in the device through this mechanism, and then it also is backed by core data, so you get that caching and the fact that, you know, if the user's in a place where the network's not available or unreliable, you get some response, and again, uh, going back to the Twitter, Facebook, 
this is going to be a little longer. I apologize. Twitter and Facebook demonstration thing, you know, on the Facebook app, if you're not near a network or whatever, the thing is blank and it's just spinning. It's really annoying, right? On the Twitter app, you always have data. You always have something to look at. And uh, asynchronously, it loads it. And then when the new stuff comes in, you see it, right? So that's the experience you want users to get. Uh, so on the server side, uh, I'm not a, really a Rails person. I'm not that good at it. So I went for something a lot simpler to learn, like Padrino. And it's a, it's a micro framework on top of another micro framework for Sinatra. And I know there's some of, like two or three Sinatra guys here. And somehow they got me to like Sinatra and end up using this thing. But uh, the ingredients are stacked there. It's really Ohm and Redis, uh, you know, just uh, um, on the creative side. Or, you know, I think the, going back to David's video about the right way to do things versus the fun way, I kind of, because it's my own startup, I don't have to answer an invite yet. I went the fun way, uh, probably 90% of the time. So uh, yeah, just playing around with Redis, and I uh, want to go back to object mapping in Redis. You can use OHM. OHM is uh, I'm not sure how good that is, but kind of like the idea so far. And it's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty new uh, mapper. I don't know if anybody's used it. Um, I think there could be a lot more things to be done, there, but it remains to be seen. Uh, so I'm just starting to use that. What's cool about it is, you know, I don't know if you know Redis, but it's a key value store and it has all these object types like lists, uh, hashes and all that really cool stuff. But it's very raw. Uh, and, you know, after a while you start to <laughs> write the same code over and over again. So the mapper thing is kind of compresses some of that, which is good. Uh, but it's not perfect. Uh, and then lastly, I think one of the things that I, I'm starting to use, I think it's pretty cool. It's also created by the guy, one of the guys that uh, created uh, Padrino, a guy named by Nathan Nesplani, uh, pronounce it wrong, sorry Nathan, it's on a video now. Um, Rabble, R-A-B-L, it's really cool. Uh, at first I can like, a oh, template language, yuck, right? To do JSON, uh, uh, I don't know what it is when you spit the JSON out from the object, but anyways, uh, it's kind of like Haml, right? And it's a template language, but it lets you create JSON bodies, much more complex than just simply JSON uh, to underscore JSON and uh, Nathan did a pretty good job of convincing me to go to it I started using it I, was, I like it and especially the part where you can actually nest and include prior definitions and for those of you that create you know API is your first uh, uh, I don't know, your primary response for your server that I think that's something you probably want to do uh, you know, as opposed to kind of just simply spinning out a few JSON for internal API they are kind of wanting to eventually do external API you want to have a little bit more robustness in that stuff. So that's just a talk on uh, uh, the ingredients I'm using for my app, and I, I don't know if there's any interest in going further in something. I, I just have a question. I, I might have missed what you said in the beginning. Are you using Ruby Motion, or are you using Xcode and Ruby FC, or like what, what are you plugging this all into? Uh, in the front end, uh, you know, as far as development goes, I'm just using Objective-C and Xcode. Uh, I believe the Ruby Motion can give you the same stuff. Uh, although I think if you get to APIs that have not yet uh, wrapped, you might have to do it yourself. I, I didn't spend much time on Ruby Motion, so yeah, I believe, you know. And the other part, you don't get the prototyping uh, storyboards and all that yet, but we, we could talk more about that if you want. I see some people are really yeah. interested. Yeah, no, actually. Is there a question or not? Not really, no. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, I'll see him later. And uh, so it's a particular technology that he mentioned that you'd like to hear more about. Talk him into giving a talk on it uh, at a future meetup. I need more talks. All right, cool.